What's up guys, David here from Phone Buff, and as a lot of you guys may already know about me, I tend to prefer the stock or Nexus experience over just about any other third party UI on Android. But the thing is, even though I prefer the overall experience you get on a phone like the Nexus 5, there are some features, both big and small, that I really do end up missing when I switch over from a phone running either Samsung's TouchWiz, HTC Sense, and of course, other operating systems like iOS 7 and Windows Phone. So, in this video, we'll be going over five features that are already out there and already exist on other phones that I'd really, really like to see make their way into stock Android to make that Nexus experience, and as a result, the experience on all other Android phones even better than what it is today. Starting with number one, which is an improved app manager that actually allows you to manage app permissions instead of just showing you a list of the permissions an app already has. So the way it is right now on Android, when you download an app, say a calculator for example, and you see that it's requesting some weird permission like access to your location, which a calculator clearly doesn't need, you only really have two options. One is just to accept the fact that the calculator wants access to your location and go on with it, and the other is to stop using the app and delete it off of your phone. Now, obviously, neither of these options is ideal, but if the app manager to work on Android like it does on iOS 7, where you can simply turn off access to a certain permission like location, but still be able to use the app, the problem would be solved and Android would be much more secure as a result. Now, the good news is Google has actually been working on something like this called AppOps, which was hidden in the code in Android 4.3, but the bad news, and unfortunately, there is bad news, for whatever reason, this feature was removed from the code in Android 4.4, so there's no telling if Google ever plans on adding it back, but hopefully they removed it only because AppOps wasn't ready and not because they changed their minds. The second feature I'd like to see make its way into stock Android is always on active listening from Google Now. While Google technically already added active listening to the stock Android home screen, it only works when the device's screen is on and unlocked, whereas on a phone like the Moto X, it works regardless of whether or not your screen is on, and it even works if you're in the middle of an app, making it a lot more convenient and practical to use. Seriously, this is the number one thing that I miss the most when I switched over from my Moto X, and with all the things that Google now can do, which I made a video about that I'll link right below, being able to access it without ever having to physically touch your phone just makes sense. So Google, if you can somehow add this into stock Android and give all manufacturers the options to support it with the specialized hardware it may need, you'll make one of Android's best features all that much better and I guarantee you it'll be something that people will consider when choosing their next smartphone. The third feature I want to see in stock Android is one that's been needed for a really long time now in a better overall camera app. Now, we've already seen an update in KitKat where Google improved its autofocus and image quality on the Nexus 5 through software, which is a good start, but I think Google needs to take it one step further with features like burst shot and maybe even slow motion to make Android stock camera app more competitive against not only third-party UIs, but more importantly, against other operating systems like iOS 7. And the good news is, this is a step that I actually do expect Google to take because some of the code for things like Burstshot are already built into KitKat for HDR+, and on top of that, a Google spokesperson came out and said that both Burstshot and raw image support would be coming to developers soon, so clearly Google has been focusing on the camera app and hopefully sooner or later it'll be at least equal to or maybe even greater than some of the camera apps on third-party UIs and other OSs. The fourth feature that I think would really take Android to the next level is not really a big one and might not even be something that you knew other phones had, an automatic video compression. So right now on Android, if I record a video of my cute little nephew and I want to send it to my dad, 9 out of 10 times, unless the video is super short, I get hit with an error message telling me that the file size is over the 25 megabyte limit, which isn't really Android's fault because that's the limit that the email clients have set, which is the same thing on iOS. But the difference is on iOS, instead of getting an error message that the file size is too big, you get a message saying that the video is being compressed to a smaller size, after which the video is automatically sent. Now, there are some workarounds available on Android, like apps that will compress videos to a smaller size or cloud services like Dropbox, but those solutions are nowhere near as seamless and require a whole bunch more effort and time, so adding automatic video compression to stock Android is something that could really make not only stock Android better, but just about any other Android experience better as well. So the fifth and at least for this video, final feature that I'd like to see integrated into stock Android has to do with multitasking. 
So for a long time now, Android has been known as the superior multitasker among the mobile operating systems and while the other OS's have improved their multitasking abilities, you can still make the argument that Android is the best at doing it, but that shouldn't be enough for Google and they should really try to take their multitasking to the next level by adding their own version of multi-window where you can use multiple apps on the screen at the same time like on Samsung's TouchWiz. But they should do it in a way where any app you want can be used in split screen instead of just a few or at the very least make it really easy for developers to update their apps to support it. Now this feature would be really cool on a smartphone and I think it would add to the experience but where it would really shine is on a tablet where you have a bunch of screen real estate to actually use two apps at the same time and considering that some Windows tablets have split screen multitasking already. I think this is actually a feature that Google needs to add to make sure that Android stays competitive in the tablet space. So there you have it. Those are my top five features that I think stock Android is currently missing. And I think if Google could add at least some of these features into the next version of Android, not only will stock Android and us Nexus users benefit, but Android as a whole will too, since TouchWiz, Sense, and all those other third-party UIs are based off of stock Android. So these top five features can very well make their way into those UIs if they're not there already. Anyways, that's pretty much it for me in this video. If you liked it, please hit that thumbs up button. It always helps out. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more mobile technology videos just like this. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the very next video.